Well, thank you so much for being here, everybody. Um, it's just such a great honor to be surrounded by so many people who are so passionate about protecting our public lands, rivers, and streams. Thank you so much for coming out. I stand before you as a native son of the big sky, and for all these years, I've been learning and telling your stories, and today, I'm here to ask if you will let me repay my debt. I'm Ralph Chris, and I'm running to be your congressman. You know, all of us have our stories about how much we, how we've come to cherish our public lands. You know, for me, I grew up in a, on a ranch uh, north of uh, Cut Bank, and uh, as a young boy, uh, we had, uh, we formed a Boy Scout troop, and it was led by my Uncle Bob, who was just this incredible scoutmaster. And many were the times that we would take 100-mile hikes through the mountains, or two-week trips down the Missouri River, and that this is where I became, you know, so involved and so deeply in love with Montana's wild and wild open spaces. So, you know, um, I just, uh, I kind of want to tell you a little bit of a story before I go any farther. About uh, earlier, I was when I was still in the primary here, uh, I was given the great honor of. Uh, of, uh, they asked me to come down and sing for the funeral of Bud Lilly. You all know who Bud Lilly is. Bud Lilly is one of the greatest fishing guides, and he was the one that came up with that whole concept of catch and release, right? And so uh, it was great because it was in the New Catholic Church, and as you walk in the door, they have that baptismal, you know, that's a really nice stonework, and then on the other side of it, they have Bud's ashes. And I was standing there with Phil Auberg, who is, of course, one of the greatest keyboards to ever come yeah. uh, through the state of Montana. And also Hal Harper. You know who Hal is. He's been just one of our stalwarts in the legislature for many years as advisors to, to Governor Schweitzer. But uh, anyway, um, Hal was saying, you know, they probably should have uh, put some water in the baptism, stocked with some trout, and run a fishing pole from, from Buzz Ashes. <laughs> But they asked me to sing a song called You Were Always On My Mind. And it was doubly poignant for me because um, I co-wrote with uh, the, the author who wrote that song uh, when I was in Nashville. We wrote many songs together. And he had passed away 11 years before that. I mean, 11 months before that. And so that was really a poignant for, moment for me. But I think my favorite part of the uh, service was they had this quote from Bud Lilly that was just beautiful. And I wish I could remember the whole quote, but it went, um, every river has a voice. Every ripple a note, every bend a refrain. And it went on from there, and it was just a beautiful poem. And then, of course, Phil Albert sat down at his piano and uh, played one of his songs called High Plains, which sounds like water running, and I just flew away. It was just an amazing moment. You know, <clears throat> when the super rich look at our, our mountains and streams, they probably think, that would be good to own and fence in. But real Montanans would say, this is our way of life. Hiking the missions, or hunting elk in the cabinets, or fishing the Yellowstone of the Big Hole. Chief Seattle of the Suquamish said some 400 years ago, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. And there could be no greater truth in the guide of this beautiful landscape. The transfer and eventual sale of our public lands is nothing more than theft against our children and our grandchildren, and I will steadfastly oppose it. You know, our outdoor life is what makes us who we are. And it doesn't matter if you're from the eastern part of the state or the western side. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat or Libertarian. Or, um, or independent, you know, this is a common value that we all share. We all share this. It is our constitutional right to access our public lands, rivers, and streams. You know, hunting and fishing and taking our kids camping, the happiest people I know are those the ones who spend the most time you know, with Mother Nature. And sometimes when I see someone who's a little depressed or a little grouchy, I think, and you should take a walk in the mountains. You know? <laughs> and on a side note, maybe Montana should tell that other guy to take a hike. <laughs> oh 
Montana's public lands are just a big economic driver of our state economy. Our outdoor industry is responsible for 64,000 Montana jobs. And uh, it, with $6 billion in consumer spending, it's also a big part of what strengthens and grows our economy. And right now, our Montana way of life, our public lands are under attack, not only by billionaires and millionaires trying to put up fences and trying to restrict our access, but by politicians in Washington, D.C. Last week we saw that the administration was planning to gut the funds that go to national parks and the Land and Water Conservation Fund and other programs that, pro programs that are vital to sportsmen and fishing access. You know, I think that uh, this is a really important stat to know, that the number one reason that people no longer kayak or hunt or fish is loss to access to public lands. I've traveled this whole country over, and I know that many other states have lost, but we still have. People, we are in a fight for our, our very way of life here. We truly are. We truly are. And just a few weeks ago, we once again saw the legislation proposed in Congress to transfer the federal lands to our, uh, to, uh, which would lead to the sale of our public lands. I uh, just want to do a show of hands. How many of you made that, that uh, public lands rally in Helena? See, uh, that was great. Now, wasn't that something? I've never seen the rotunda just fully packed with people on every level, every corridor, all the stairs. I got there pretty early, and I was still four feet from the, the ledge. I couldn't see anything, but boy, you could sure hear everybody. And, you know, there were people from all walks of life there. There were, of course, hunters and outfitters and kayakers, hikers, and all those uh, groups that are passionate about protecting our public lands, the Montana Wilderness Association. The Rocky Mountain Health Foundation, but on and on. And I have never seen a bill disappear so fast from the halls of Congress. In my life. And that's what it is. It's, we have strength when we do that. When we unify, that's where we make the difference. People say, when you get to Congress, you know, you're going to have the least amount of seniority of anybody there. How do you think you're going to make a difference? And that's how we do it. Even though I would be only one voice, I'd be one more voice. John, John Fester needs a partner in Congress. Yes, I will stand up to any attempts to take away what creates thousands of jobs and strengthens our economy. And when elected, I'm going to stand up to those politicians, especially if you still want to take away our public lands. And I will work to fully fund and reauthorize the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which invests millions of dollars in our economy. I will support local and collaborative forest managed proposals made right here in Montana to expand access and to put more Montanas to work in our forests. You know, too many people in Congress think that, uh, that Washington has all the answers, particularly when it comes to rural America. But we have the answers right here. And that's why I'll support Montana conservationists, the timber industry leaders, and outdoors men and women working together to improve our forest management, create jobs, and expand access right here in Montana. And speaking of forming coalitions, I'll work with members uh, of Congress from other Western states to make sure that the Forest Service has the funding it needs to do its job of managing our forests. Instead of going bankrupt fighting wildfires, you know, we must end the practice of fire borrowing and ensure that wildfires are paid for just like other natural disasters. You know, this election could not be more critical. There are politicians and there are special interest groups that are trying to, that are going to great lengths to take away our access to our public lands and destroy our way of life. And you know what? My opponent is one of them. Yes. Yes. Mr. Gianforti, of course, has sued the people of Montana to eliminate access to the, the fishing site on the East Gallatin River. And if he understood our Montana values, he would not have bought up land and put a fence around to keep Montanans out. And he wouldn't have given thousands of dollars to special interest groups looking to privatize our national forests and, and sell off our public lands and take away access to our streams. And so he's been funding and working with the very politicians of group, groups that want to take away our Montana way of life. <clears throat> now I want you to consider this. Look who the politician that he was campaigning with. Rick Perry. Rick Perry, who works, Rick Perry has publicly advocated for, for uh, selling... Uh, public lands, yeah, the public lands of America. So Mr. G. Ford, his record tells us one thing, he will not be fighting for the Montana's interest in D.C. Yeah. 
Yeah. And he spent millions of dollars trying to buy the past election, and that didn't work. <laughs> this house seat should not be his consolation prize. Well, you know, and my promise to Montana is that I will never support the transfer or sale of federal lands. And you'll never have to worry about me suing the, suing the state of Montana to block stream access. I'll tell you that. Well, you know, it's, it's just, you know, Bozeman, you're blowing my mind. Every time we come here, it's just, you, know, you guys are turning out. And, um, you know, I just, everywhere we go, I've never seen so much energy for an election. This has really been really gratifying for me, and I have to tell you how truly humbled I am by the turnout that we have wherever we go. And as I look around, I see those of you who I've made a personal connection with. <clears throat> I know that we've sat together and we've shared our concerns and our hopes and our dreams for this land. And I know that uh, if we stand together, that you know we can do this. We can we can bring this home. So. me you know um how could you uh how could you leave a life behind that you love you know as a musician and a performing artist but the, the short answer is this is just too important it really is you know i could not stand by and watch what would happen to montana if we don't stand up and fight for it um, before i do this song uh, i want to do a poem that uh that i've uh, I've written about how I feel about this big sky country, and then I'll, I'll sing my campaign song. <laughs> but let me do the poem first. You have a sip of water here. You can tell my voice is getting a little scratchy with all this campaigning. I've been averaging three um, speeches a day and several uh, <laughs> But that's okay. We're in this to win this, right? Well, you know, I've been hiking the trails and um, canoeing the rivers of Montana all my life. And just like the Navy people here, this is my sacred ground as well. And so I want to do a poem about how I feel about this big sky country. Montana. She's been called a Navy when we sing her praise. And if you fail to see the logic, well then, let me count the ways. Her cirrus hair is red and gold at evening sunset's light. And I've always thought her mountains looked especially good in white. Her gown is luscious green when she attends the annual springtime ball. And she fancies orange and gold at harvest moon and fall. Her wild and natural beauty, it will take away your breath. Oh, but just take her for granted. It could easily mean your death. <laughs> She's slow to grant her favors to come lately, newer faces. <coughs> to longtime suitors, she reveals her hidden, secret places. She lives in big time splendor. She's the heart of the Golden West, and all manner of wondrous creatures live and suckle at her breast. And yes, there will be those who come with schemes of ways to use her. To sell her body like a harlot. To cheapen and abuse her. If you've sworn your love for her, revere, respect her. If you're a man of honor, you must cherish and protect her. And should we fail in this task, we'll lose this living treasure. Should we prevail, this lady that we love will live.
got no people to hurt me. This world can be so cruel. The lovely rumors raging around you make you feel just like a fool. But if you stand with me, and I will stand up for you. You are not alone, and I want you to know this world wouldn't be the same without you. We can never be truly free until we lift all humanity. Don't ever let it get you down when trouble comes around if you stand with me, and I will stand up for you. I'll be a strong shoulder to lean on When life seems cold and bare In every way I will defend you Count on me to be there And if you stand with me And I will stand up for you but You are not alone and I want you to know This world wouldn't be the same without you we can never be truly free Until we lift all humanity Don't ever let it get you down When trouble comes around If you stand with me And I will stand up for you Stand with me And I will stand up for you Stand with me, Montana. Stand with me.